Hi everyone, this is the second and final part of my setup of the F1 1990 custom championship Amos 2. And I'm basically doing this video to fill some blanks and create an overview of my final general settings and the decisions I've made towards the calendar, realism, authenticity and some well, limits to that. Um, so that I won't have to explain that before each round or race. So first off, I am still to finish editing my championship. I've decided to do a 50% distance championship, including 11 rounds. These are chronological order according to the real 1990 season. Interlagos, Imola, Montreal, Silverstone, Hockenheim, Spa, Monza, Estoril, Perez, Kansai, or Suzuka and Adelaide. I will not do Monaco because that's no fun in my opinion and there also won't be any fillers or uh, the missing tracks like Phoenix, Mexico or uh, Paul Ricard. So that's also a concession to authenticity. All of these chosen tracks are either 100% accurate or at least come very close like Interlagos, which is a bit different, the 1991 version, and also Silverstone, where there is actually a chicane missing. That was a peculiar version they raced on in 1990, which we do not have in AMS 2. Speaking of um, differences and limitations, next thing up is according to your requests. So thanks a lot for your comments on my first video here. I've decided to reduce the pit speed limit. Because he told me the maximum of 200 kph can be very problematic for the AI. Them doing stupid mistakes, entering or exiting the pits, spinning, crashing, whatever. And to avoid that, I've reduced it to 140k. I know, in reality, they did not have any speed limit. And setting this value down, of course, means that pitting becomes even less attractive. The mechanics in today's F1 only need a bit more than two seconds to change four tires. The mechanics in 1990 weren't as quick. They needed seven, eight, sometimes 10 seconds. But due to not having any speed limit and in generally the pit lanes being a lot shorter than those of the modern Tilker circuits, they only last about 20 to 25 seconds to their opponents on the track. In today's F1, I think there is no circuit where a pit stop can be realized below 25 seconds. Nevertheless, um, for let's say security's sake or for the sake of having a smooth session, I reduced it nevertheless. Another deviation from, not from, well, authenticity, but from my initial plan is I will not use real historic weather. But too often it becomes only a gamble with yeah, having weather that wasn't really the case at the time you want to do your race. So I've come to the conclusion to set all weather manually. And in the case of Interlagos, I'm just showing that as, in, as a blueprint or example. I would have, for example, three weather slots. It was hot, but it was also yeah cloudy. So I'd like to go with, let's say, heavy cloud at the beginning medium cloud and even and then light cloud. I will have the weather progression synced to the race. So in theory, as we will be doing around 45 minutes of race time, we will have 15 minutes of the first, 15 of the second, and the last 15 minutes, um, the third stage or weather phase, right? But that's only in theory. Um, it's still up to the game. Um, when exactly the weather changes and this will also be come in yeah, as another really cool and exciting factor I'd hope uh, when we will have rain <laughs> or let's say at least moist conditions then as we are doing 15% races I will set tire wear to two times and fuel usage to two times there was no refueling in 1990 and as we are past the turbo age, fuel shouldn't actually be a problem. Nevertheless, it makes, of course, a big difference whether you start with only half the tank full or the tank being completely full. 
I'll be driving Nigel Mansell's Ferrari 641, the number two Ferrari in that year. Teammate was, of course, Alain Prost. Yet, although this one is cool, it is not the closest representation of the real model. Of course, a concession to licenses. As a matter of fact, in that year, Ferrari was pretty unique with their chassis and their whole setup. Yes, they had a V12, and yes, the power is about correct, but of course, the body was pretty different from what we see here. And also, that's the main difference, a six-speed H-pattern shifter, while in reality, Ferrari, of course, had their semi-automatic gearbox with the shifter pedals on the wheel. Okay, that's a big difference, but just to let you know, guys, where authenticity and realism ends here. In total, there are five different car models in here. This is the only original one. That's, of course, the McLaren MP45B of Senna and Berger, the title-winning car, finally. Then there is a pretty neat and close to reality iteration of the Tyrrell car of that year. It comes in pretty handy also for for Razor because yeah most of the cars had V8s of Ford, Cosworth or Judd. Here it is. Yeah, take a look. One, two, three, four, five teams. Tyrrell, Footwork, Leighton House, Brabham, Benetton with Nanini and PK. And, as you can see, here we do have two different models because I decided to put in the Osella Ford driven by Olivier Couillard, a team that only had one driver, but I wanted to include that livery and that driver because the livery is fantastic, a fantastic work by the Immersion Modding Group. And I decided to replace the number seven Brabham, which was driven by David Brabham, because I wanted to have as much variety as possible and the best cars and drivers in there and David Brabham wasn't able to score any points that year the two points Brabham achieved were on Modena's account and Kuya overall even performed better in the final ranking as my plan is as I'm striving to achieve as much authenticity and realism and immersion as I can possibly get out of the game and of that season to achieve a benchmark here for me and for you, <laughs> hopefully, being able to create some exciting videos, I've decided to create a new profile in Crew Chief, more or less representing the functions they had regarding radio. Back then, of course, telemetry was more limited and, well, the, the pits, the race engineer, if there was any at all, uh, couldn't tell you all the details that they can do nowadays. It was pretty much limited to some basic info. I mean, like, Alain, push, Senna's closing down on you. Or something like, Nigel, Berger's coming in, into the pits, now push. You can get out before him. And my new profile wants to, well, replicate these, these settings. This is a work in progress, and let's see how it turns out in the first race at Interlagos. Also, I, I honestly couldn't find any objective and clear info on what exactly they were able to to do or were allowed to do on the radio back then. So if somebody of you knows, um, please tell me in, in the comments. The basic info still was pit boards, of course, and you can bet on it. I will also use a classic pit board and in conjunction with that, won't use the HUD in Amos 2. So I won't have any visual info on my tire attempts, on my, my engine wear, and on, of course, the leaderboard, not only for my championship, but for immersion and authenticity sake. I even bought a new wheel, which is a, a replica of the McLaren MP44 with those uh, two neat buttons. And well, since there is nothing else, so we'll have to make a tough decision what to put on these buttons and what then also to put on my uh, external button box, because there are some features that I would like to be able to manipulate, like for example, the onboard roll bars, of course, and the onboard brake bias, or like the, the, the pit limiter, or like calling for a pit stop. So these are at least four functions I would like to have assigned to some buttons. 
Regarding the AI difficulty, I will keep that value on a dynamic ace, so to say, always trying to adapt it to my personal skills, track specific, and regarding the real times, try to find the sweet spot between, as I'd like to call it, challenge and authenticity. For Interlagos, for instance, I think I will try 110 and then let's see where it leads me. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and ring that notification bell. Enjoy your time, happy racing, and we'll see each other on the grid of Interlagos. Bye.